Inside the uh, Sprinter 144, we are going to put one GoV Smart thermostat underneath the air conditioner. We're also going to put a second one located in where your kitchen would be. We're going to take two different temperature readings and we're going to see what a nomadic cooling air conditioner can do with an hour in high cool mode. We're going to check the battery consumption and we're also going to check the cooling capacity inside the shop here, 85 degrees, simulating what this air conditioner would do on an 85 degree night out in the world. Let's get after it. DC air conditioners have pros and they have cons. The cons are they do not cool as much as traditional AC units that go on top of your roof. The pros are they use less power than conventional rooftop air conditioners that allow you to run these air conditioners for longer off the battery banks that you have inside your vehicle. The number one thing that I need to point out to customers out there is that 70 degrees outside does not mean 70 degrees inside your van. There was a study done that on a 70 degree day, within 10 minutes, it's 89 degrees inside your van or inside your car. Within 60 minutes on a 70 degree day, it is then 113 degrees inside your vehicle. Let's go up to a 95 degree day. In 10 minutes, it becomes 114 degrees inside your vehicle. After 60 minutes, it's 138 degrees inside that same vehicle, and we haven't even got up to 100 degrees yet. The air conditioner is not actually taking it from the 80 degrees down to 60 degrees. You're actually asking the air conditioner to take it from 123 degrees all the way down to that 60 or 80 degree, 80 degree number. There's a fantastic video on YouTube by Talon Sai. He slept outside at night at 110 degree day. It is the best video by a van lifer explaining what you can expect and not expect from a, from a DC powered air conditioner and all the tips and trick to make sure that you're doing everything possible to help that air conditioner do what it's actually intended to do. Behind me, I have my Sprinter 144 that's completely insulated and it has Touareg window coverings all around the whole vehicle. I have a Nomadic Cooling 3000 on the roof. I have 400 amp hours of Victron batteries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run two experiments today. We're gonna run the AC inside at 85 degree ambient temperature for about an hour. We're gonna do a screen capture on this and see what actually unfolds. We're gonna take it outside, same scenario, 110 degrees outside, direct sunlight. And let's find out what the Nomadic Cooling 3000 can actually do. And remember over here at Nomadic Cooling, we will not today or tomorrow oversell our products to you. We wanna make sure that you, your loved ones, and especially your puppies are always cool, calm, comfortable, and safe when they're going further in comfort with a DC powered air conditioner. Let's go. All right, Kenny, it's 2.05 p.m. in the afternoon. I have screen record on on my iPad. It's exactly 87 degrees in the kitchen, 83 degrees in the bedroom. We're gonna come back at exactly 3.05 and we're gonna check and see what the temperatures are in one hour. The air conditioner is a Nomadic Cooling 3000. It is in high cool mode with the fan mode all the way turned up. Let's see what this air conditioner can do. All right, Kenny is exactly one hour later. It is 3.04 p.m. It is about 110 degrees outside. It is about 85 degrees inside the shop. The very first thing I'm gonna show you, I have the screen recording going on my Victron Connect app uh, on my BMV 712 inside the vehicle. We're currently at 13 volts. Sorry, it's loading up here. We're using about 72 amps. We are in high cool mode. It is 946 watts. Time remaining with this air conditioner running at high cool is about three hours and 30 minutes. I have 400 amp hours of lithium batteries inside from Victron. That's the math, okay? Basically get four hours of runtime, about 100 amps in high cool. In eco mode, it's gonna be about 50 amps thermostats right here. I have the one in the kitchens at 77 degrees. The one in the bedroom is down to 63.8 degrees. When we're reading 63 degrees at the bed, the thermistor is probably reading up at the air conditioner around that 60 degrees, which will make the air conditioner turn itself on and off. We do have the window curtains up from Torrig. 
It's completely wrapped around. We have good insulation in the van, 75 degrees here in the warehouse. We don't have any sun. Sorry, 85 right now. We don't have any sun banging in on. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna go into the kitchen side first. We started this experiment exactly an hour ago. We went from about 87 degrees all the way down to 77 degrees in the middle of the van. So we basically have a 10 degree delta between what the starting temperature was and the ending temperature. If we go to the bedroom, which is checked right underneath the air conditioner, we started at about 85 degrees and right now we're hovering around 64 degrees. What does this mean? This basically means at night on an 85 degree night, you can comfortably sleep in your van in the 60s. Okay, what we didn't do in this test is we did not use the air conditioner from the engine to cool down the, cool down the inside of the van before we started this. The humidity right inside is about 34%. And we started at about that 85 degrees and then we're dropping down to right now 63 at the bed. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna do the same exact experiment. We're gonna take the Nomadic Cooling 3000, we're gonna shove the vehicle outside into direct sunlight, about 110 degrees out there. So guys, let's see what the Nomadic Cooling 3000 can do on a Sprinter 144 in direct sunlight. You're not in the chain whatsoever. The van itself has been outside for less than 10 minutes. It's 128 degrees on the van, okay? The glass itself, 113, and we just brought it outside, okay? I think uh, the weather today has got the outside temperature about 115 degrees. It sucks, welcome to Arizona. We ran the test inside. We stopped the test at about 3.07. It is currently 3.23. The other reason why we have the van so close is so we could pick up the Wi-Fi signal on the thermostats inside. We have the temperature of the, uh, the bedroom currently at 66 degrees. And we have the temperature in the kitchen area right at 76 degrees. If you remember, we started the test inside at about 85 degrees. Uh, nominal temperature or the temperature inside the, the uh, studio right here. It is eight, or sorry, 324. We have the air conditioner set to the lowest temperature possible. And let's see what temperatures the uh, come out of the Nomadic Cooling 3000 in 115 plus degree temperature with direct sunlight. Uh, these are not conditions that I would recommend for you. This is the only time I would suggest to use your air conditioner is if you're driving from A to B and you have to pull over the side of the road for an hour long nap. This is not something that you would do long term. In fact, if you did try to do this long term, your batteries would only last three and a half, four hours. Uh, so this is the worst case scenario for your nomadic cooling air conditioner. But we do have everything in place. We have all the window curtains uh, going. We've got the AC going. And let's come back in exactly one hour and see what the Nomadic Cooling Air Conditioner has to offer. All right, it's exactly one hour later. It's 425 in the afternoon, 115 degree ambient temperature. The side of the van right now is coming in at 130. If I put my... Uh, 154 on the concrete right now outside. Uh, I'm not in the shade right now. The glass is coming in at 130. Um, does that come up on camera? Currently inside the vehicle, it is 87.8 degrees. Back in the bedroom, it is 86.8 degrees. Um, I have screen record on. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the bedroom. And you will see that since it's gone outside from 85 degrees, uh, temperature inside to 115 outside, you can see that the temperature has slowly rose, rose, sorry, excuse me, from 66 degrees all the way up to almost 90 degrees inside the vehicle. If I go to the kitchen, same thing as well. We did the temperature earlier, started at 82 inside. We brought it in, we brought it down to 78. And now we can see that the temperature is rising again to the 87 degrees. 
Now, if this vehicle did not have the air conditioning on, and we're gonna go ahead and turn the air conditioning off here in just a second, but right now, what are we learning? We're learning that the sun has too many BTUs for that air conditioner, and it's not able to keep up with the direct sunlight hitting on the vehicle. This is a Sprinter 144 with a nomadic cooling 3000 unit. It's using right around 100 amp hours per hour right now to run that air conditioning. And if you were sleeping underneath the air conditioning on a 110 degree day, 85, 80 degrees is not gonna feel too bad. But the question is, can you use a nomadic cooling 3000 unit to cool a vehicle in 110 degrees all day? And the answer is clearly not. It's not for that, it's not designed for that. 110 degrees at night without the sun bearing down on a vehicle is easy enough to keep the vehicle cool. Same scenario, Sprinter 144, Sprinter 170, 170 extended. Can you keep the vehicle cool in these sorts of extreme temperatures? The answer clearly is it can't keep it cool. They're designed to increase your comfort inside of your vehicle, but they are not designed to make it so that you can be inside your vehicle in these sorts of extreme temperatures. Same test at night, not a problem. During the day, indirect sunlight, the evidence is clear it will not do that. These are very big financial decisions to make. First of all, you have to invest in the van, you have to invest in the batteries, then you're investing in the air conditioner, and then because you bought all of those things, you wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of all of your purchases. You wanna get the most out of your batteries, you wanna get the most out of your air conditioner, so you wanna make sure that everything is working perfectly. Here's the rub. Even with spending all of that money, it does not guarantee that you are going to be able to keep your vehicle cold in these types of extreme temperatures. What we showed you today was 85 degrees and then we showed you 110 degrees outside sitting in direct sunlight. Somewhere in there is different variations. The important thing to remember here is that if you are trying to travel from place A to B with your vehicle, what you don't want to do is plan to be in some place at these temperatures for this amount of time, or for an extended amount of time, I should say, because the nomadic cooling air conditioner, or for that matter, any air conditioner, DC or AC for these vans, is not gonna keep up with these sort of extreme temperatures. Guys, if you wanna go further in comfort, give nomadic cooling a chance. Go over to nomadiccooling.com today. Check out our air conditioners, check out our complete electrical kits, and check out everything else that we bring together over here at Nomadic Cooling for your mobile living environment.